All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. We're here with Brett Keen of God TV Radio Show. Check him out on YouTube.com slash at sign Brett Keen, all one word, at Brett Keen. YouTube has implemented like the uh, Twitter handle thingies, the at the sign and then the handle name, Brett Keen. Um, check him out. He does podcasts. He does religious and political videos. Um, he's a Christian who uh, believes that, uh, well, let me rephrase that. He doesn't like the term Christian, but he does believe Jesus Christ um, is, is Lord and Savior, if that's a great way of putting it. Um, I guess that's like a, I, I don't know. Let's just ask Brett. What, Brett, what, do you like to be called Christian nowadays, or are you still a little iffy on the label, or what what, what exactly is the deal with the, what you want to be called nowadays? <laughs> Well, if I get into a room with a bunch of Christians, they feel like because I believe in the Bible and believe in Jesus and what Jesus did, they'll argue with me for hours on end. Yeah, they, they want that label and everything, and it seems to work for them. So oh, it's I, just I prefer Thea. Yeah, it's it's to just get out of all the aggravation, just cut right through the cheese. It's and plus atheists, they they got to have a label so they can have something to bitch about. It is what it is. Now, is it just because it hurts people's brains that you think outside the box and you don't need to be labeled? Is it just like it's easier for people to comprehend you? Just like uh, you know, they're just low IQ'd and just two brain cells to rub together. Is that what it is, or? Well, everybody wants you on their team type of deal, I guess. And But the Christians are the first yes. ones to crucify you, though. They're the ones bitching at you that you say fuck and shit on video. I mean, it, what, they want you on your team, but then they're going to call you all sorts of filthy names and saying you're demonically possessed. Every group will come up with something to bitch and whine about. It is what it is. So have you? So let's go with that then. Let's go in that as a transition. Groups. You did a video. I think um, you, you e, EA Dawa. You were uh, checking him out. He's a Muslim brother. He's a, a white person that converted to Islam, and uh, you found him to be kind of nice. And but there were other Muslims that are just, uh, you know, what can we say? Wild animals, I guess, would be our terminology. Well, he's uh, he's obviously an American who throws the name Muslim on himself. He's able to speak plain English. He gets the whole being a former atheist. He used to be a former atheist, a former Christian, former whatever. So me and him identify and relate a little bit easier is where you get the Middle Eastern version of Muslims where if you agree with them on something, they automatically think they're that you're about five minutes away from becoming a Muslim. And they're very pushy. They like to sermonize. And, well, they get extremely fucking long-winded. And you know how I am about long-winded bullshitters out there. That's true. There's two things that piss Brad off is being long-winded and going on a diatribe for two, three minutes. And not having a working microphone. If you don't have a working microphone, you better not even bother going near Brett. He will bitch and complain, Brett, until you get off your candy ass and walk your ass down to Walmart to buy a new microphone right there and then. He won't wait for you for the next podcast. He won't wait for you when you get free time. He wants you to get off of the couch right there as you're speaking and get yourself a working microphone. It's just that's just his, that's just the way it is. Yeah, that is right. And with the one of the things I discovered about the Muslims is they can get pretty uh, damn blasphemous whenever it comes to the Bible. They'll tell you, oh, we respect all the prophets and all that. But what they truly mean is they only like the people that are in their own damn book. Uh, they will just shit all over. Uh, the Bible and everything, and they pretend as though they're doing it in a nice way, but it's really no more different than sitting in a room with a bunch of uh, heathens. Yeah, it's a, it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, so the, the different groups out there, Brad. So, is there? Are you optimistic, Brad? Are you ever gonna? Are you gonna get that day where you can finally say, ah? I finally made a group. I finally got into a group where I, I finally feel like I belong. 
Or are you are you just always going to be Brett? Just uh, you know, to- tooting your own uh, um, what's the, what's some terminology? Uh, going your own way or whatever the terminology is. You're just going to be a loner. Well, throughout the 20 years of doing YouTube, I have ran into people who, like yourself, and I've also ran into some Christians and some atheists and some people of every group, rare and in between, that turned out to be really awesome people. But they're not like some of the the stringent snapper heads we've dealt with. Some of them have left. Some of our friends have passed away. And uh, it leaves you basically with a slew or army of demonic asshats. Do you feel like it's easier to to have a, an ally when doing this YouTube thing, the social media thing, or, or I mean, what what is it that causes what 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 is behind psychologically? If you were able to break it down, Brett, why do you have to take breaks off of YouTube? What exactly is it about the filth that you just have to turn it off for a while? It's not so much about uh, people running their mouth. I'm used to that shit. That's To me, that's like just turning on the TV and turning it off. What bothers me, John, is the mental stimulation. I need to feel like whenever I'm having discussions that at least one fucking person is, is carrying it on or something, or there's something exciting happening or or at least something that'll get me to think and unfortunately when you're dealing with atheists religious types or whatever they tend to fucking parrot the same thing that's been heard 20,000 times for the last 20 years I want to talk to actual people John like yourself not fucking robots who are scripted and everything they say yeah, you want to. You don't want to talk to NPCs anymore. You're done with the non-playable characters, right? I mean, if you want to hear the same thing being said all, uh, you know, every five minutes, you you open up Fallout Four and you and you talk to the the market guy, and he'll say, uh, "You like to buy something today?" And you can just hear that five six times every five seconds. You know, I get what you're saying, but doesn't it? Don't you run into the same problem? Uh, you know, drug addicts and alcoholics have is that. You're always going to have to up the up the uh, up the ante and, and up the fix. Like you know, shooting you know snorting one line of cocaine helps for a year, and then you got to go to two lines of cocaine, and then three lines of cocaine, and eventually your, your head explodes. I mean, uh, how much mental stimulation are you going to find? I like I get it. Like what you're saying, you want to hear something new and original. You want people to get you know put some thoughts behind it. But, you know, most average person is just going to be able to just read what they sort, you know, re- regurgitate the filth that, you know, Iron Ra says, well, Iron Ra, you know, he, he's got a cool b- black leather jacket and he's got the Terminator shades. He looks like a demon and he says he speaks real cool. I mean, I mean, that's just what you end up with. I mean, Brett, are you, are you hoping for too much? I think you're hoping for a little bit too much from humanity. I, that's what I'm trying to get at. Well, I did lower my expectations the last time around. The thing that really got me the last time, the thing that really pushed me over the edge was, as you remember, I was doing a whole lot of these Kent Tobind interviews and shows. Yeah. And my intention was to actually help the man. I wanted to be able to help him deal with some of the fucking haters that he's got. And unfortunately, um, it just seemed like my show was giving more fuel to the fire, causing him more damage. He doesn't feel that way. He uh, he felt good being able to have someone to talk to and, and do that. He doesn't have, even though he's got a lot of people, they look up to him and they need him for guidance. But sometimes uh, even a minister or leader needs a a friend that will listen to them and their problems and issues and all that. You understand what I'm saying? But I felt like I was fucking him over unintentionally because people kept on coming and and climbing all up in his ass. And that was starting to break my heart because I really like Kent. It would be like trying to help you, John, and a bunch of people are attacking you and I feel as though I can't do nothing about it. And it fucking makes me sick. It's the same deal with Vaughn. I've told you about that. You know, it's it's funny. You should do a podcast. It could be called Therapy with Brett Keen, live live therapy with Brett Keen. Doc, you know, God TV Radio podcast therapy. The therapy session. 
and you know you you every week or you know whatever every friday night you bring a, you, you you know you open up the room and all right you know you're, you're laying on the couch you're, okay come on let's talk about your problems you know what what's your what's your issue today mama didn't love you enough uh, you have a penis the size of a doorbell all right let's talk about it let's see if we can fix you so also <laughs> well that's the, that's the problem Everybody wants to do live discussions and shit like that and talk and put their laundry right out for everybody to hear. That's the issue. I don't mind being a listener and try to cheer people up and be a little bit optimistic if possible. But at the moment a person starts putting all their shit out there, well, it fuck, they're going to have 100 world, videos yeah. made about them. It's going to cause them more damage than good. It's That's like the a problem, public yeah. therapy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know what? I didn't think about that. You know, it, that, that's the, fir the first thing I've learned, Brett. You know, the first hard lesson I learned on YouTube, and it hit me hard. And you know, you've been here with me for like 15 years now. And when I got that realization of that, I, I'm doing vlogging videos and I'm talking about my mental health and I'm talking about my day to day living and how I feel and what I think. And I'm doing these vlogging because I want to vent and, and, and sort of have some therapeutic session. I was giving people all sorts of different fucking filth so they can make a, a, a website about me. And now they have this whole lit. It's like now I hear every day, you know, filth that, you know, it's just like it. it that was a real hard. I, I mean, I it really hit me hard. When I came to the realization that was the biggest mistake of my life was ever telling anyone on the internet anything about me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we got a piece of uh, Brett Keen is a god in my opinion. All right, yeah, you, you think so, huh? <laughs> He's just trolling. Von and that, and what, security what's sad He's a troll. Too, John. What happened, Brett? What's sad too is uh examples like G Man, Von Helton. I would say to them, look, man, if you ever need to talk, just like I told you, I said, if you ever got any issues, you need to call me or you need to get a hold of me on one of these stupid pieces of shit softwares, we can do that. And you can talk to me and all this. But everybody wants to go fucking live. G-Man, I remember he said, man, I am so pissed off. I need somebody to talk to. And I was like, well, what's the problem, man? Well, hold on a second. Let me get a, a fucking live show going. I'm like... Dude, if you put your shit out there, they're going to fucking beat the hell out of you. Don't you understand, sir? And uh, he's like, oh, it'll be fine. I, I just need somebody to talk to. And uh, he wanted an audience. And look what's happened to him. Yeah, that's, the, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I don't really get, I, I, I guess I got caught up. I guess I got caught up into it too, Brett. I think we all get caught up into it. Like we think like YouTube is like uh what would you call it? It's like some sort of like, uh, you know, it's like you're you're a you're an influencer. I think that's what they call them, right? And we're, we want to be this influencer, and we want to be there, and we want to be a role model. And you get caught up into it, you know. You get caught up into it, but the, the fact is, they, these people have fake lives. The real ones that succeed in in life, like Mr. Beast. Or like that foodie woman that eats on camera all the time. Like they live fake lives. That's not their real personality. And I think that was another rude awakening for me, Brett, is that I'm trying to be a real person. Just like you're like you. You're Brett Keen. You are you get exactly who you're who you are. You get Brett. When you talk to Brett, you're gonna get the same Brett like in real life. And the tr and the and the truth of the matter is that these people are fake. They're faker than than their wife's orgasm. That's the truth about it. About it, and it's sad. And you can't change anything. You can't do anything about it. You 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 can't. It, it, this internet. It's it's why it's called programming. That's why it's called television programming. It's all pro pre programmed. It's all scripted. That's why it's called scripts. Like if you're editing in web software, you edit the script. Why is it called script? Because it's a, it's all it's all pre determined and so you know once you realize that that you're never going to have a, a, a companion you're never going to have a real discussion it all goes you know it all fits better like i have much better conversations with vaughn me and vaughn we'll just we'll just turn on the camera and we just let the filth fly 
and we have fun about it and we and and people make fun of us and we're laughing at them because we're trolling the trolls at this point i mean it's all it's all a shit show at this point brett but uh, but Brett, I feel you, man. You're really looking. You're genuine. You, you're still putting up the fight, Brett. That you want to find someone real on the internet, man. I, you got some fucking determination about you, man. I tell you that, man. Well, it's not just that. I feel like I have found some people, uh, at least a handful or two of people, like yourself and everything. But I, uh, I I don't know if you realize this. I didn't talk to you about this yet. But Kent, he's been contacting me. He wants to do the shit again. He wants to get up oh, there boy. and defend himself. And I'm like, Kent, you do realize that this shit can damage your ministry. It can cause you hurt. And he goes, well, they don't have the truth. Those people out in the audience don't have the truth or the facts. And I said, Kent, don't you realize they don't fuck care about truth? They don't. They don't. They don't care. care about a good man you are. They don't give a fuck that you're feeding pigs and sheep over there and and trying to entertain people and please people and take care of folks, bring people to the Lord. They don't give a fuck. They're here to watch you burn. Don't you get it? And he's like, "Oh, Brett, you're so negative. I I think it'll be fine. Publicity's publicity." I'm like, "Fuck, man! Didn't you even look at the comments when we were doing that shit?" But I told him, sure, if he needs to talk, and this is his way of getting out his his raids, and that's the way it's got to be, John. That's the way he wants it. I only I put my I put my name I put my email out there, I put my phone number out there, and there's my Facebook, there's my Twitter, my Instagram, Twitch. I got every you you. There's no excuse. There's no way you could possibly say I can't get a hold of John Gishler. There's no, there's no excuse. You, you can't say you can't find me. 929-376-9794, my phone number. John at gmail.com, my, my email. I get no positive emails. I don't get a positive phone call. I get phone calls telling me they're going to come and kill me. They're going to rape my wife. They're going to do this to me, do that to me. I get emails saying all types of different things harassing me, threatening to get me fired from my work, blah, 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 all the way down the line, right? I get no pot. So, you know, where are these people at? Oh, you know, there's good people here on the internet, on YouTube. There's good people on, they're just here to, like you, like you say, did, like, Kent, did you read the, did you read the, the, the chat on the live show? They're not there there to support you. They're not there to be reasoned with. They're not there to be, change their mind. Maybe, you know, maybe 1% of a 1% of a 1% chance of maybe one person, maybe just maybe have like one wheel in their head kind of turn the right way and one brain shell maybe rubs again to another brain cell. And if you get lucky enough, maybe that person may be able to think for themselves and finally break the matrix. But the odds are it's never going to happen. They're just there to make you, they're there looking to entrap you. They're there looking for you to say something they can use. They're there to look for you to say something the wrong way, or you didn't word the sentence the right way, or you didn't say the word correctly. So they're going to make fun of you for 15 minutes because you said, you know, you said the word uh, Gishala instead of Gishala. Oh, I don't even know how to say that. It's so meaningless. It's, it's meaningless nonsense, complete dribble. And this is what they love. This is what these people love. They just get, they can't get enough of it. You know, yeah. You, you know. And what's sad, John, is there there are people out there that I know adore Kent and all that. But then whenever they see the slew of assholes around their mouth, the good people, they just go quiet. Because they don't want to be thrown into the mix. They don't want to get hated by the haters who are making their shit most public. You know, so there might be people out there that are listening, John. They feel for you and some of the issues you go through, but they just go fucking silent while the the haters are do that because haters are very vocal. They want to be. This is their way of being relevant, significant. Yeah, it's like the minor. It's like uh, feminists or LGBTQ. They are very loud. 
but they're an extreme minority. These people, no one believes in what, what these people push in public and the politics, but the, because they're so vocal, it drowns out everyone else. And it seems like they're larger and a bigger group than everyone else when the truth is not, not the case. But the, the fact still remains, Brett, why are, okay. You, yeah, I would love to meet these new good people. Just just email me and we can have a private conversation. I, I still don't. Brett, I'll be honest with you. I mean, do you get people in the background, Brett, that, that emails you or phone calls you and, and say, hey, Brett, I just want to be in the background and have a chat chat with you and, and, and a relationship off air without getting into the drama? Or are, are you able to find success, success in that? Brett might be taking a smoke break. We'll wait. No, for it him. took a moment for me to unmute my mic. It took me a moment to unmute. Say the last thing one more time. I'm sorry. Somebody tried to call me through the fucking Google Voice browser. Last sentence. What were you saying? Were you able to find success in, in finding like a pen pal or 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 a person to have a online relationship with that isn't based on drama, but not on the internet or not live in public? Well, I told you, John, uh, it is, uh, it's easy to get fucking people to slew in, but they're going to be a problem as far as decent people on the internet. Well, damn, the people that I've been friends with for years, like yourself, are the only ones that I realize that uh, aren't going to try to fuck up or do things. We're the only, uh, as far as I'm concerned, John, you and I and only a few others are decent. Adam, he totally fucking blew my mind what he tried to pull the last time we talked. That was one of the most upsetting deals I had to deal with. You heard about what he did, right? He spread some lies about you being homophobic or something. There was that, and then he also tried saying that uh, Kent's a pedo endorser, all this kind of shit, and also started going on this bullshit about corpses being buried on fucking dinosaur land. Well, I mean, it was boy. really, really pushing that shit to the limit. And uh, one of the last things, you remember they were kept on pushing that whole missing kid thing? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Well, that missing kid isn't a kid no longer. He's a young adult. And he ended up coming on the show. It was one of the last shows I did. He said that everything was fine, that Kent was cool. Nobody tried to molest him or do anything negative. And he was totally fucking awesome. But then that Mark Stoney bitch, the drug addict who used to uh, work over in Dinosaur Land, decided to try to get him on the videos and inspire and influence him to say otherwise about Kent just to start more drama. You see what I mean? Yeah. They're just looking for more fuel to the fire. Kent's an awesome guy, man. He's somebody that you'd be able to call up and talk to and... He'd be nothing but friendly with you, John. How he's been done is just fucking horrible. He's in the same box as we are. Yeah, I'm like it, it, I'm like one of the nicest people you ever meet. Like if you ever meet me in real life, or you ever came over my house and hung out, or or came visit me in my workplace, we would have such a great time, man. I'm like the fun, outgoing, lively. I'm, I'm a loving person. I'm happy. I'm, I'm go. go um, you know, what's the um, um, lucky, go lucky kind of personality. You know, it's only like when the demons come out and like they want to put their filth on you, do I get like bogged down and I get like all depressed and stuff. Like that's the, that's the only time. Yeah, I love it. I, I mean, Kent does seem like a good guy. And you so, Brett, I know you for 15 years and I know who you really are. You know, and I know that you would never do 99.9% .9 of the things that the filth, that the garbage that, I've heard people say about you the same thing with Vaughn. I know, I know 99. Okay. Vaughn may be a little uh, eccentric. He's a little, uh, you know, erotic. He's a little out there, but Vaughn is not an evil guy. Vaughn's not a bad guy, nowhere near it. And Vaughn's not abusive. He's not a hateful person. He's just a, he's a guy that likes to talk about aliens and conspiracy theories. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and you know what? And, you know, a lot of it turns out to be true. And and, and that's why I, you know, I, I say, you know what? I made it my mission. When I, when I, like, remember when I first said to you, Brett, it was hard for me to, I used to watch you on YouTube 
Uh, back then, you made some really funny videos. I used to love the videos you made. You know, with the squirt gun. I mean, where's Where's Jesus? And you're looking under the rock with the tur You know, like, hey, I heard there's a Jesus. You know, and you're, you're like an Italian mobster. And those are funny videos. Or when the one I like the one where you're supposed to be like a like a gorilla, like a gorilla fighter, and you're like uh, looks like Che Guevara, and you're like, I'm gonna infiltrate YouTube. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna sneak into YouTube, and then your wife is there, and she's like. We're just going to ban him off the internet. <laughs> yeah, I used to love was... doing videos and goofy shit with my wife, but my wife fucking absolutely hates YouTube. Yeah. When, I... when she has seen, uh, you know, Vaughn in the room going on about his problems and then Kent doing what he did, she's like, I can't watch this shit. I, I can't see it. They're killing themselves virtually on the internet doing that. Makes her sick to see that she can't do but three minutes of it. Well, yeah, and she's got a pretty bad deal, especially with uh, Mendham, Gary. That that fucking mop looking motherfucker head. I mean, you know, for for all people, well, she's, about she's not as uh, she's not as offended by him. She was a little aggravated back then whenever he started calling her names and all that, because she was truthfully and sincerely trying to help him. She felt sorry for him. I mean, he uh, he has worse agoraphobia than I do, where he can't even fucking hardly get out of the house and shit. And he he will never have anybody there for companionship. So she just felt fucking miserable for him and wanted to just be friendly. And he act like a cocksucker, and she's just kind of like, well, you know, there's nothing that can be done for the poor bastard. You, you think that's true for some people? Some people just can't be helped. Amendon's got a lot of hate and rage in him. He's got a lot of fucking anger. He needs years and years of professional therapy. So I think that's where he is. I mean, he's just praying for the end of the fucking world, man. But what 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 brought him? I, I mean, I understand he had issues with the sister. I think he what he saw his sister die or something that made him break or something. I don't remember the entire story of Amendon. But uh, you're saying a little yeah, he had a, you know? he had a sister. He had a sister die, and that's uh, that caused him a lot of shit. And then in the past few years, he lost some relatives. So, yeah, it's it's understandable. That's the reason why he yells and screams about how stupid God and religious people are, because he believes that if there's a good God, then this shouldn't happen to his family members. But unfortunately, there's nowhere in the Torah or the Bible where it says that life is going to be fair and that we're meant to live forever unless we accept God. It is what it is. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I just don't get the uh, it's, it's psychological. Under, I don't. I don't understand it from a psychological point of view about Amendum. He, I, yeah, he's he's someone that you could put him in a lab and dissect him, and you, I don't think science could ever figure him out. To be honest with you, he's a little bit too quirky. But someone like myself, someone like you, I think we could be put together. You know, I, I don't think the I don't think the world is is that bad. At, personally, I mean, you know, I'm not one of these people like Bill Gates who says that they, you know, the world is overpopulated and we have to exterminate 90 percent of the population to fix it. You know, um, you know that that talk, that sort of deal. Um, and that's what Amendum thing. I mean, Amendum is, you know, he he has the philosophy of uh, life spelt backwards, right? Ephesum, whatever he whatever he calls it, life spelt backwards, and it's basically saying that life is the most evil thing to ever exist. I mean, how could someone be so far down, scraping the bottom of the ship barrel to ever say that life is is so evil that it should never have existed? I mean, think about all the beautiful things that happens in life. That only an existence of reality could you ever have, you know? Well, John, if you ever start feeling down or you feel like these fucking Muppets out here are too aggravating, just remember they're a power button shut down five seconds away from disappearing off of the earth for you. Uh, if you just think about what you got, you got a beautiful wife who wants to paint with you. She's a good cook, according to you, and... You got a nice fucking place. You got a good car. You got shit stabilized. All this other shit, this is just fantasy land. You shouldn't let it fucking get to you at all. These people mean fucking nothing.
Thank you. I appreciate that, Brett. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You just have to shut the power button off. And I got to remember you that. Know, I, you know what happens you know. to my world, John, whenever I turn the fucking power off or I decide I'm done with listening to some of the fucking yeah. Rudy yeah. candy asses out there? What happens is I turn it off. I go in the other room. I got a beautiful, sexy-ass wife in there that I've been with for fucking over 20 years. I got two fantastic children who are grown up having a good time, making a life for themselves. I'm paying my fucking bills. I'm doing angel uh, games in the snow during the winter. I'm good to go. Yeah. You see all the fucking presents I got under the tree. So these uh, fucking Pontius Pilate motherfuckers can kiss my ass is how I feel Amen. about it. So we're going to get a Christmas video from you, Brett. You're going to do a little family video with you opening presents. That'd be kind of nice to see on YouTube. A little... You usually do just a screenshot and the voiceover. You're going to do live videos again? Well, my family's going to be coming over, man. I don't want to be having a camera pointing at it and shit and what we're doing. You're going to hear well, I don't all want you. I mean, like, I don't want you. Yeah, I don't want you to be, in, you know, sticking in other people's faces, man. I'm just saying maybe have the wife pointed at you and you open up a gift and then we see you get a new pair of socks or something and you're like, Oh, wow, new socks. I always wanted socks, you know? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, just, you don't see you on camera, you know? I, I, we haven't seen you in a ca on camera maybe, like, for a couple of years now. You just, like I said, you just do a screenshot with a voiceover. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's up to you. You know, hey, you know, we don't we 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 love your beautiful voice. We love you no matter what, whether you're on camera or not. We love you, Brett. You know, that's all. Now that putting your face on camera means you're gonna have fucking twenty ignorant ass videos made about you. If you there were more, um, oh, let me ask ahead. you that then, Brett. You think that's a, a deterrent for video making? Is that people are less likely to make videos about you if you're not on camera? Of course. Of course. Yeah, if they if they copy my videos and try to upload them or screen capture them, they're going to get a cool looking picture and fucking God TV radio on my YouTube channel advertising across it. I mean, there's no fun in that for them. My videos look fucking cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the artwork and everything and it ad they'd be advertising. No, they want to. They want somebody's face moving around so they can fuck around and be ignorant. That's true. That's the way it is. That's true. Yeah, some people shouldn't even be on camera. Remember, you know, remember people like uh, God. Oh man, I'm bringing back the the old days. Remember that guy terrorizing. Remember him? He used to go on camera. Holy cow! Yeah, I got someone that should never. Put, someone me. who made the mistake of ever going on camera. Yeah. So what have you been doing for fun lately, Brett? Like what 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 uh, well, you know what exactly are you uh, into? Well, my daughter and I we've been uh, spending a lot of time watching CSI. We like finished up like 15 seasons of the Vegas version and we're going to be getting into the cyber crime CSI. We, they also came out with a sequel to CSI Vegas, and me and the girl, we love watching these science channels and shows and stuff like that. We like to, we play kind of a game. We try to solve the case before the the cops on the screen solve the case. It's it's fun for us. We pause it, and I go, "Who do you think the suspect is? Who do you think did it?" And we, uh, it's it's fun for us. How do you, Brett, take the uh, names off the screen so you don't have to see the name on the, let's see, shift videos? You look in uh, the brand section of your uh, stream yards. Oh, it's not in settings. It's in the brand. Oh, okay. Oh, let's see where this filth is. Oh, I don't see it. I see add background music. I see change the, we can change the background. Okay. You can change the background. Nice. We can do all that. But where's the, where's the uh, name thing? Ah, there show names. Show names. There we go. There. Now we got your beautiful picture up there. Look at that. God TV radio. Nice. 
Yeah. What is what is one thing that you think people misunderstand about you, Brett? Well, I don't think. Uh, I think people who pretend as though they don't understand. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. I put you on the full screen. Oh, I don't so think there is there. anything to misinterpret about me, John. I think that you and I are very clear in our communication. We're articulate. When we make our fucking point, it's as clear as day. It's just that people want to... It's not that they're misinterpreting us. It's that they're deliberately trying to... Well, fuck, you've seen the videos where they edit what you're saying and only keep one line. They do what is called mind-quoting. That's called intellectual dishonesty, what these pricks are doing. Same thing they do with Vaughn. He may talk about a vampire movie. They take the word vampire out and then claim that the motherfuckers count Dracula. It is what it is. They, they fucking know better than that. Yeah, they do know better. Yeah. These are people that couldn't get fucking laid to a gerbil. You know, that's the problem. Right. They couldn't get laid in the morgue of the corpses were nailed to the tables. Right, Brett? Couldn't get laid in a fucking kennel if all the dogs were let loose. Yes. <laughs> um, Gangster asks, why can't I join? Well, it's just a private discussion. I, it's just me and Brett chit chit chatting. I mean, I don't, Brett, do you want Gangster Ghost to come on? Is that or? Well, I've or, seen him ask you repeatedly, why is it that he, that uh, I don't enjoy talking to him? Well, the problem is, is one, he doesn't talk very much at all. And number two, if he does talk, it's usually about a transgender issue over and over and over again. And then there's one more problem. He brings up people that he knows I have issue with. Like he'll go, so uh, Brett, what do you think about the latest stuff the drunken peasant said or the amazing atheist? Now he knows damn well if he's been watching me and listening to my live shows, I don't fucking like these idiots. I don't want to hear about their fucking face. So yeah, why would yeah. why would you do that? And he and I'll say, do you have any other questions for me? What do you think about Aaron Raw and what he said about how Christians are stupid? I mean, it's like I I don't know if he's like slow or if he's fucking deliberately trying to annoy me. It's obvious. Some people, some people say that he's actually a troll. He's trolling us, and that he's actually like a normal person. He just pretends to be a dumb dumb. That's what people. I, he's he's actually came into my room once and actually spoke normal, and I and I figured it out. I, I put the two together. I go, oh, okay. He's one of you know. He's just uh, you know, he's just here to cause issues. So well, that's the problem I have. He either doesn't fucking talk, and when he does talk, he wants to ask me questions about people that he knows are annoying to me. I mean, you can't get anything from Amazing Atheist. I mean, you can't even get an erection. I mean, the guy can't even... I mean, he's, he's what, hung like a doorbell. I mean, he's just... <laughs> he, I mean, the guy, I mean, I would be mad, too. I would probably hate God, too. I'd probably end up, like, being an atheist. Um, and Aaron Rod doesn't lime Christians, doesn't like Christians. Well, you think? I mean, he dresses like Satan, and you know, he dresses like, uh, you know, someone from a horror movie. He looks like a fucking Klingon to me. Yeah, kinda. He does, yeah, you know, with the long hair. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say, Brett. I don't really know what the answers are. I'm, I'm just floating out in in, in the universe, looking for, just looking for a place to. To settle down, and I think you're right, Brett. I did find that you know, I have a beautiful wife, I have a home, I have everything I ever need, and it's just like you know, I, I, there's nothing, there's no, there's no reason to be upset. I, I found peace, and I think it's okay, and I'm just trying to make do with it. And I like to have fun and talk to people too, so that's just where I'm at. You know, I made my, I don't, I don't come to YouTube looking for answers anymore. Like, I think I used to when I was younger, Brett. Like, oh, let me see what this person has to say. Like, oh, let me see what this person has to say. And I find, and I, you know, then you find people like TJ, you know, who, who has like a pet rock. I mean, what was, what, I mean, can you name Brett? I mean, I know you don't like talking about the Amazing Atheist, but 
what's the greatest achievement the amazing atheist ever done in his life i don't know scam people out of hundreds of thousand dollars for a website i don't, I don't understand what, what exactly does he give the universe well, I think people like him for the same reason why people back in the day liked Nirvana. Uh, they feel like, uh, when you look at a, like a lot of the rock bands of the 80s and shit, they look like gods. You remember that? You look at all these bands and these guys just look like they're fucking badass, like they can get pussy like it's going out of style. Right. Well, shitty, yeah. dumpy-ass people can't identify with that. They can't relate with someone that's fucking looks like a god and has a 100 motorcycles in a mansion. But they look at him and say, hey, this guy, he's decent at talking. He's fat, he's ugly, and stupid just like me. Yay! So they feel like they can identify, I suppose. And the fact that he doesn't have a dick. I am convinced that most atheists don't have dicks, and that's why they're pissed off. So he's like their leader. Right. He so he's like a splitting a splitting image of like the average loser on the internet. And so there he's like that's where they go to. Like he's what's the word I'm looking for? He's like draw he's drawing them in. He's like uh like a like a magnetic field pulling them in. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, just basically a shit ball and everything. But <laughs> that's all going to change and shit soon. The reason why is because it was different whenever he was a younger guy. Young people were able to identify and relate with him. But as he gets older, as you probably noticed by if you looked at his channel recently, as well as uh, the dickless penises, these motherfuckers ain't getting views no more. Nobody's paying attention to them. You got a guy who's almost 40 years old who's still dressing up in makeup and thinks he's 17 years old on the fucking camera. There's, there, nothing's yeah. changed. Nothing new to be said from him. Damn. That's, that's sad. That's, I mean, that's pathetic. I mean, they're just reliving their glory days. Is that what you're just saying? They just want to relive their, uh, you know, the I, apple I that goes from, far from the tree. Yeah, absolutely right. TJ's father was a con man, and and TJ I, is a con man. Go ahead, Brett. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I see that uh, Ghost is saying, I'm not a troll trying to be friends with Brett. Well, if let me ask you something, and let's... I'm going to let John analyze this uh, this thing. If John were to tell me, Brett, there's five assholes out there that just crawl under my fucking skin. They make me sick. And he were to tell me who the five people were that piss him off totally. And then I were to turn around and say, John, I'm subscribed to all five of them people. What do you think about their latest video where they fucking make fun of your mama or some shit like that? How do you think John would fucking react to me, Ghost? He'd I think, think I would. I, I think I would probably Shawn Michaels sweet chin music right to the face. I would. I would probably think. You'd be like, why the fuck is my good friend Brett Keen watching fucking filthy bastards who shit talk me daily have made entire channels about me? You'd probably wonder what the fuck is wrong with me. And that's your problem, Ghost. You like to watch a lot of this bullshit and then bring it back to us and shove it in our fucking face. That's not a friend. A friend does not watch this kind of shit. And then throw it back on the, the person they're walking with? You get what I'm saying, John? That's my logic. Yeah, I never understood that. I remember, I remember you be doing that to me all the time in the in the past. And I never really, when I was my when I was wet behind the ears, I didn't quite understand that situation. Oh, God, now I ain't saying it. I didn't understand why that what was that way. And so now I, as I got older, now I understand exactly what you mean by that. And it kind of dawned on me, I actually had a similar situation happen to me with, with Will, our good friend, um, uh, uh, Billy Brown, I guess we can call him. And he he would do the same thing. You know, he would, you know, love love watching Amazing Atheists and love watching all these human, subhuman garbage on the internet. And it's just like makes me think like, what, what exactly is going on here? Like, what exactly goes through a person's mental faculties to think like this is a normal everyday behavior to act like this? This is not, this is not good. This is not, you know what I'm saying? And I was going through, I, I was going through, I made peace with it though. I, I, 
I forgive Will. I, I don't. I forgive everyone, and I'm 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 a water off a duck's back kind of guy, and I'm too loving and. And that's a, that's the difference, uh, John, between these internet sociopaths and reality. If you and I are walking through the fucking mall, and you point over at somebody that's hanging out in a shop and say, "Brett, I hate that motherfucker. He's so mean to me. I have to work with that prick at my job, and they're just constantly fucking dragging me into hell." And I go, oh, really? Well, let me go hang out with them for a while and hear what they got to say about you, John. <laughs> You'd be like, you bitch. <laughs> you know I mean? That's fucking bigoted, ain't it? It is bigoted. It is a hateful thing. And I, I remember, I remember, I remember not very, I, I, I didn't quite understand it, but once, once it clicks, it clicks. I mean, maybe, maybe you can't relate to it now for the people out there listening and we, you know, we're just people out there listening and going, oh, John and Brad, they're just being old grumpy men and they don't, what's so bad about that? But once it happens to you and once, once people, once it, ha- once it happens to you and you realize how it feels, then it clicks and then you'll understand exactly how I feel. It make how we feel. It makes you feel like, like, like your friend doesn't actually give a shit about you. It makes you feel like what you, what your feelings don't matter. And what you think don't matter, or you know, you're not even you're not even worth anything. It makes you feel like, it, it like it's like Will, you know, he like even today, even like even though I forgive him and I keep forgiving him, he he claims to be my friend, right? And I'm uh, I'm having a live stream. Listen to this, Brett. I'm having a live stream with with Vaughn, me and Vaughn, and we're we're talking, and Will's talking to me in private chat in the Facebook, and he's saying, oh, I. Oh, you and Vaughn talking about this, and he's leaving. You know, he's down. Oh, okay, I'm listening. And then I go and look and see Todd is stealing my video. He's sniping us and he's recording us illegally, and he's putting it on our his his channel. And who do I see? I see Billy Brown leaving comments on Todd's channel at the same time I'm doing the live channel, and he's in there having a good old laugh. And I say to the fucking Todd. And I said to the fucking cocksucker, I said to the fucking cocksucker, I say, what type of fucking balls on you? How fucking big are your fucking balls, cocksucker? You're to the city and say, you're a buddy of mine. You're enjoying the show. And there you are, instead of being on my show live, you're on the cocksucker who's harassing me and hurting me constantly day after day, chit-chatting up like your fucking old buddies from fucking Vietnam. Fuck me in the ass. Holy shit. What a fuck. I told him you're and a that's fucking. Uh, that, that's exactly what fucking ghost did during the Kent Hoban drama. And and gangster ghost, he's either fucking stupid or he's just ignorant as fuck. What does he do? He knows that Mark Stoney's making video shit talking me, shit talking Kent, and shit talking everybody that I know. And Ghost is such a fucking loser that he'll hang out with anybody in a fucking room, pretend he's their pal for the moment. What does he do? He jumped right on Mark Stoney's fucking chat. Mark Stoney is drilling on my ass and shit on his video, and Ghost is right there. He made sure he got right in there. He then asked me later, he goes, Brad, does it make you mad when I hang out with your haters? No shit, Sherlock. What are you, fucking dumb or something? You see what I mean, John? And as far as Will goes, remember when we first met Will for months, I didn't like that motherfucker. I told you I didn't like him. And you said, I think he might be a nice guy, Brett. And remember, he'd come in and say, hey, John, Brett, did you see what the latest DP video is? And I said, did you taste my balls recently? What's it like for you? Remember that? Yeah, I kind of kind of vaguely sort of. Yeah, remember those days? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was. I, I, I guess I was. I guess I was wrong, Brad. I mean, I can admit I was wrong. I mean, he does claim to be the king of the trolls and things like that. He claims to be a. Um, he likes to Joker. You know, he likes to Joker for Batman. You know, he likes to see the world burn for no reason. You know. So yeah, I, I can I can take the L on that one. I can I can take an L on that one, Brett. No, nah, it's not your fault, man. You've always been forgiving. You always try to see the good side of a person, but 
I could tell right off the bat why he was hanging out with us, John. On Discord, he told me over and over, he goes, I got kicked out of the Drunken Peasants Discord. I got kicked out of their group. Ben hates my guts. So now he wants to hang out with Brett Keen, the other side of the equation and shit. So I knew what, what I was fucking dealing with a long time ago. Look what he did to Raging Atheist. Pretended to be his buddy and then turned that into a big fucking drama fest. Yeah. But he got and he up. got me hating on Rage. And I didn't I don't know who this guy was from an Indian. I don't know who the hell he was. You know, and he's you know, Will's feeding me all this type of you know, propaganda. Oh, you know, Rage is a Rage is a piece of shit, and Rage is a fucking deadbeat dad, and, you know, Rage fucking molests his daughter, and Rage does this, and Rage, and I'm like, you know, oh, all right, Rage seems like, yeah, he sounds like a real fucking piece of work, doesn't he, you know, yeah, he's an atheist, you know, yeah, well, yeah, you know, piece of garbage. Well, and so like, I went with be it, fair, and, and I, I don't think Rage is actually right when I look back. Dumb... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I'm not trying to say that Raging Atheist is a saint. He is a dumb shit. But he didn't deserve to have his child thrown up at him like that. He didn't deserve to have Google Maps put out on him like that and all this fucking pedophile remarks that Will put Yeah, forward. Will, I mean, Will going through your Facebook page taking pictures and Will going through um, Rage's videos and, and pictures and going through his Facebook and taking pictures, yeah. That's pretty rough. Now, to be fair, officially, I'll I will say this: I think it's a little weird for a father to kiss his, his own daughter on the lips. Like I I do think that's kind of weird. Um, my mother, you know, kissed me as a child, but she would always kiss me on my forehead or my cheek or my nose or my ear or my you know you know somewhere around my head. But my mother and my father never put their fucking lips squared up on my lips like that that yes i will agree with will on that that it is kind of little it's a little weird but to go after him and call you know that is call, weird that is weird that's unusual but it's not but that's not saying something to hate his daughter's a totally different story you know what i mean there's a yeah, difference they, between they, doing they, something yeah. weird like kissing over trying to make it out to look like the guy's pecker and his own family members. Now, now to be weird, now to be fair, you know, now Smokey is a legitimate pedophile who rapes girls, underage girls. Now, you know, to compete, you know, you know, to call, you know, to call the kettle black here, Will, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're going to get on rage for, you know, giving a pecker on the kid, but then, you know, got some guy stooping a, a minor and, you know, ah, you know, eh, I'm, I'm going to be a good friend with that guy. Um, now what? Now Rage, you know, Rage actually found God recently. He's he's not an atheist anymore, Brad. Have you heard? No, I ain't heard about that. When the fuck that happened? He has a channel. He has a YouTube channel. He gave up the Rage and Atheist, and he he goes by the channel called Rage to Reason, Rage and the Number Two Reason, and he talks about um, you know how he's more spiritual, and he talks about you know now he does hate on Christianity a little bit, and he does hate on Islam. Is there Abrahamic, but he does he believes in a higher power now. He does believe in a in a in a god or a supernatural uh, a creator or or a prime mover, uh, um, something something that whatever you want to call it a creator god. So there is progress on that front, Brett. I'm gonna check out that. I didn't know he had a rage to reason. You say? Yeah, I'll I'll put the I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link, Brett, if you want. So what what what? No. So, All right. So let me ask you this, Brett. How difficult? I mean, you you were an atheist who came back to God. Is it a difficult struggle for, to get out of atheism and and come back to a belief in God? Well, I mean, you've seen what has happened. The atheist communities tried everything they can to fucking treat me like an apostate and shit on me. Even the ones who, whenever I was a popular atheist, they all pretended as though they loved me and cared about me, but it was pretty obvious they didn't give a fuck about me as a person. All they gave a fuck about was that there was someone articulate who was batting for their side. They didn't give a shit about me as a, a human being. 
Yeah, they don't they don't really give a shit about you. People just want you as a number, like you said earlier, like it's like the groups, like you were talking about Christians and Muslims. They want you as just like, oh, we can say we have three million people in our group. They don't really care about you as a human being. You know, I mean, you know, even my stunt with Judaism and I used to go to, when I used to go to um, my synagogue for seven years straight, going on eight years before I finally gave up and I left and I moved to Lake George and I moved away from that Long Island. And, I, you know, it's just they, they, they it's just there. Then you're just there. They don't really care about you as a human being. They don't care about you as a person. You know, you're just there as a number. You know, you're not a human being. Never, never got a phone call when I was in pain. Never got a phone call when I wasn't doing well. Now, there were some people that I made friends with along the way that I keep up with. And that's those meaningful relationships that I, I do appreciate. And uh, I just thank those people in my life. And they, they know who they are. And, I, you know, I just, I, you know, I won't say nothing on here. I don't want to say their names in, in, in public. But. You know, like you say, Brett, you know, you hope for the, you know, for the positive relationships along the way and you find people along the way to really give you, give you love and, and uh, give you uh, friendship and, you know, and, and you build, you know, I met my wife, Brett, you know, happenstance, you know, and it just, things happen. You just don't expect things to, out of all places, out of all locations, I end up moving up here. And I just, all I did was change one little thing about my life and boom, boom, look at all the amazing things that happened to me. And you can't, you're trying to tell me there isn't a God. You're telling me there isn't a, a, a purpose in life. You're telling me there isn't meaning. You're going to tell me it's just nihilism and solipsism. And I, I just make whatever pleasure I want in, in life. And that's what I get. No, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be more than that. And I, because I, I felt it. I've lived it. I, I, I've literally lived it. And I can tell you that there's no coincidence. There's no just random happen chance. Yeah. If things didn't happen exactly the way they did in your life, John, then you wouldn't have went down the right street to be able to meet the wife and all that and be able to have the happiness that you do. It's all timing. It's all there's it just feels as though there's some kind of guidance towards the direction yeah i put the i put his link in the private chat if you want to grab it you know maybe take a look oh, i already went over there i subscribed to him and i said i hope you're doing well looks like the video's a little bit more cleaner and nicer than he used to be that's good yeah, to it's hear. Like he's getting his act together it looks like he's doing good yeah like I say, I don't have nothing against him. I, I don't really know him. I never really – now, he has said nasty things about me in the past, which were pretty hateful. And, I you know, I, I you know I understand. We went back and forth at a time. And I just want things to be happy. I just want to be a happy person. I just want to be a positive person. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to call people ugly. I don't want to be hateful. You know what I mean, Brett? I, want, I, I don't want the nastiness out of, you know, come out of me. Like I said, Brett, if you ever met me in real life, I'm the most happiest, go lucky person you ever meet. Positive, uplifting, and I try to be a social person. I try to be an uplifting person, always finding something positive. But I gotta be honest with you, Brett. There's so many people that just want to knock the wind right out of your seals. They just want to tr just knock you back down, throw you back in the gap. And I understand, you know, they're hurting. People who abuse other people are hurting because they're abused. So the, here's a question for you, Brett. What are some advice out there for those people who are struggling with being abused? Or maybe they're the abuser. Maybe they're a bully. Do you have any advice for them to sort of help their situation and, and, and getting rid of the hate? Well, it depends on their age and where they're at in their life. If it's a young person, you just got to remind them that at some point in time, they're going to be in control over their own life. They'll be an adult. They'll have the right to be able to get out and do things. The better the job, the better the education they have, the better place and, uh, you know, things that they need in order to survive will be there. And they won't always be under the thumb of some abusive parent or family member or whatever. As far as adults, um, whenever it comes to, like, the abuse on the Internet, you just got to, you know, I told, I made a video about, the day my trolls and haters died. Did you see that, John? 
I did not see that video. I apologize. Well, so it is over on the channel and stuff, and it kind of goes like this. I had a guy a while back, John, this was a few years back, that was just fucking running me over constantly on the internet. Made a hundreds of names so that he could continuously, repeatedly attack me in comments. He said everything from attacks to my kids, to my wife. It was fucking horrible. So I end up going to his channel to see what the fuck I'm dealing with. I'm thinking, who's this brilliant motherfucker? He must have some Tom Cruise-like videos up there, some real articulate shit that's going to blow my mind. He turned out looking like something that entered a Freddy Krueger uh, look-like contest to win. This guy was fucking horrible, <laughs> and he was he sounded like a Jerry Lewis. Kid. And I'm like, well, no wonder this fucking guy is going after me like this. He's, this guy has no life. He's got no fucking future. He's going to end up in one of those residential homes and locked in a fucking room somewhere. No wonder he's pissed. And when you realize that, when you realize that the people who are attacking you are fucking pieces of trash like that or fucked in the head, then you realize it's not you. There's nothing that you've done wrong. It doesn't matter if you're Nicolas Cage or Tom Cruise somebody's going to hate you just for being fucking beautiful. That's true. You think, you think about it. Yeah. That, that's a great way. That's a great, beautiful um, explanation there, Brett. I really appreciate it. And thank you for sharing us, sharing us that because that is absolutely true. There's nothing that you did wrong. You, you're simply getting hate from a person that has such animosity for life because of who they are. That they have to smear their, smear their shit everywhere else and other people that are better than them. Thank you, Brett. I appreciate that. That was good. Thank you. Um, I hear you. Now. <laughs> I hear you. Brett, would you like to ask me any questions? Do you have anything to say? Anything to add? No, well, what you've been up to? Have you and the wife been painting pictures still? Or have you found a good show you enjoy watching? Yeah, we've been... Uh... We've been watching everything we can find on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Those are our go-to shows. We actually watched uh, Basic Instinct uh, with uh, Sharon Stone. That was a hell of a movie, man. She's naked every other scene in that. Uh, sex and fucking and sucking and killing and people dying. And, uh, man, what a movie. Uh, the wife and I, we've been painting a little bit. I've been experimenting with oil paints. So I've been trying some new things. The wife has been, the wife was able to sell um, some vases that she made. She made vases and then turned them, uh, took them and painted them and made designs on them. And people love them. She sold one for like $200. She sold like another one for like 70 bucks. I mean, just crazy. Just absolutely killing it. We've been doing a little bit of travel. We've been going around different places. It, it got a cold here. It's, Negative 10 degrees here in New York. So we we haven't been going out lately because it's just been cold. But, yeah, that's kind of the things that we've been doing lately. Just living love and life and just just doing the best we can, man. And just loving, just living it up, man. Just doing good. There's just so much love going on over here. And it's just so, it's so sad because, Brett, if you looked at any of my haters' videos – you would see a whole list of comments. John is a loser. John doesn't have anyone. John's wife hates him. John, you know, John is homeless. He he got kicked out of the house. You remember Dan? Remember you were saying that you know he was you know the uh, trolling. He was going around telling people that my wife kicked me out of the house and that I was out in the street and I'm in a new place. I mean, I mean, when you have friends like that, Brad, who needs enemies, right? You know, you can think about it. But um, I yeah. hear you. It kind of reminds me of the shit I see over on Twitter and what some of these liberals say about Trump. Trump's a fucking billionaire, man. He's a billionaire who fucking owns real estate all over the planet. And they're what they're doing right now, get this, they're saying that his wife, uh, Ivanka, or whatever the fuck her name is, isn't wanting to fucking now how the hell would they know that are they fucking going to bed with him are they fucking taking little trump's hand and going up to the bedroom with him to see what his wife's doing and that's the shit they're spreading on twitter about the most one of the most famous men on the fucking planet now if trump can't get a break 
fuck makes you think that we're going to get a break from these losers? These are people who are never going to get any pussy. They're just not. They couldn't get it from a fucking Ethiopian with HIV. And that's that's just the way it is. So, of course, they're fucking pissed. Yeah, their lives are pathetic, Brad. It's just the way it is. Yeah, it's just they're... Oh, they watch us because they need a soap opera, I guess, right? You know, and then if they don't like the main character in the soap opera, they just say nasty things, you know? Website, I hate Jack from Days of Our Lives. That guy, Jack, he's such a piece of garbage, blah, blah, blah. Why the fuck are you making up fucking internet posts on a fictional character? So if there's people out there doing that, and, they, you know, think about how deranged people are. Think about think about all the mental illness that people have in the in the uh yeah melania trump is trump's wife yeah melania i can't i can't believe that they're saying that about trump trump is probably cramming it in her twice a day morning and night and he and they're and they're worried about it don't worry don't worry about what trump's doing that's my answer to that don't worry about even, trump. If, even if trump was getting laid at this point what is he almost fucking 90 years old now I mean, my goodness, the guy's been getting laid all of his fucking life and shit. He's probably seen every piece of ass that is uh, imaginable. So he's 90 years old now. Maybe the old mushroom tip isn't functioning like it used to. Who gives a fuck? We know the guy lived a full life, didn't he? He lived a life that uh, uh, many people couldn't live in a hundred fucking lifetimes to do. Right, this exactly. guy's been the president. He's been a billionaire. He's been in fucking movies, TV, commercial, and shit. I mean, the worst thing he's got going for him is his fucking hair's fucked up, and that's about it. You don't like the Trump style haircut, huh? It's, it looks like a fucking cereal bowl. That's the only criticism I have of him, but it is what it is. Some women find that to be sexy as fuck. I find it to be unusual, but it works for him. You know, it's kind of like his trademark. So, if you if you could be Trump's hairstylist, what would you what would you give them? I'd tell him to slick the shit back, like the old mafia bosses. Look like a fucking <laughs> Godfather or something. That's what I'd go for. <laughs> slick that shit back, you know. Slick you know, it back and fucking... dye it black. Slick it back and dye it yeah. black like you. Brad. Don't want to fuck. Yeah, throw on a fedora and a trench coat. You got it going on, mate. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that would be a good look for him, man. He would he would just be like killing it, man. Full beard. And now he's now people are saying he should go with a beard. Do you think a beard would look good on him? I don't know what it would look. He might look like Paul Bunyan or something with a fucking beard and mustache. I don't know. Some people look fucking awesome with a beard and mustache. Give them some Hulk Hogan fucking hangers, you know what I mean? Yeah, Hulk Hogan is a guy that looks, you know, the Hogan mustache. Yeah, see, there's some people that can pull it off, and then there's some people that can't. Like, I saw a guy with a, with a mustache the other day at work, and I'm like, damn, that's like a sweet-looking mustache you got. And it looked good on him. He looked like a cowboy, man, from the Wild West. But I can't imagine Trump having a mustache, man. He would look like a, he would look kind of like a clown, to be honest with you. He, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Trump, you should get like a nice slick bag, nice black fedora, get a cigar, talk like, you know, hey, I want to drop Hillary in the Hudson River where she belongs. Eh? You feel me? You know, just, I, yeah, that would be good, man. Anyway, Brett, we've been killing it for an hour. You want to keep going for the, or you feel like you want to go on with your life and have fun doing something else, modding at Facebook or fate fallout or something. Well, I'm too tired to mod or play a video game right now. It's up to you, man. If you want to ask me more questions, what I think of fucking losers on the internet, I'm here for you. <laughs> no. All right. I think fine. I should I'll give somebody some advice on how to do a ring and thing. Who who do you think is the biggest loser currently on the internet right now today? The people who claim that they hate a motherfucker and they keep returning. I mean, John, I don't know about you. Maybe you and I are different on this. 
But if I click on a video because I think it's going to be interesting and it turns out to be some boring motherfucker bitching and whining about some motherfucking bullshit and everything, hating on somebody, my ass will click off and that'll be like the last fucking time I ever even look at that fucking user. So if I know that in one minute I feel like I'm going to vomit at what I'm looking at, that's the end of it. I'm, I'm not returning to let them know that I hate their shit. Why would I do that for? No, I'll just go find something fun to do. You know what I mean? That does seem like a waste of time. I mean, it, they must have some sort of pull on the person. Like, if they hate you, Brett, like, let's say a person hates you, right? And they just keep coming back. They keep subscribing to your channel. Every time you close a channel, you open a new one. And they just keep coming back. And they keep searching for the new Brett Keen video on the YouTube. And they'll... Oh, even that John Gishla guy's hanging out with him. Let me sub to him too. There must be something capsulating about you. You you must be just electrifying. You know, you're just 250 pounds of pure sexual erotic power, man. It's just it's just you're too too much for them, I guess. You know, it's just like what I don't know what drives them to to you. It's just too sexy, man. Did I tell you about this motherfucker I triggered uh, last time I was on YouTube? You triggered a motherfucker. I love to hear oh, this. Oh, yeah. The guy, he thought he was going to be funny. He thought he was going to be a heckler on my show and try to piss me off or something. He said, uh, Brad, I got a question for you. <laughs> I'm like, sure. What's up, man? He goes, why do you lay on your belly when you make videos? And I said, that's because that's the way your mother likes to fucking position. She likes to be on bottom. And, and I ram her quite well. And he goes, what the fuck did you... And I kicked him out of the room real quick, but he was going, he was getting ready to fucking lose. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, Brad. You're too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, people want to be fucking cute with me. I'll get cute right back. You know what I say? You play stupid games, you win stupid fucking prizes. Prizes, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of people back in the day. They won a lot of stupid prizes. I we had I we had some really good times on the on YouTube. I mean, looking back, it was a it was a good time. It was a good time. We had a blast. I thought I thought we really had some fun times. My I you be, between me and you, I really I, I always tell you this all the time, Brett. My favorite video you ever done when it came to haters was it's time to burn the worms or whatever the fuck the title of the video is burn the worms or whatever it's called. One of the best videos that you ever done because you just go down, you just blow. It's like a, the way I imagine it is like a long line of people on their knees tied with, with the hands on the back behind the back. And you have like a fucking shotgun and you just one by one, boom, Boom, <laughs> lighting them up for execution. <laughs> boom, you know, it's like, all right, Coughlin, boom, Napalm, boom. You know, it's like, it's just like, oh, man. oh, and you destroyed them. I haven't seen Nephilim for, I haven't seen that, uh, that Nephilim motherfucker for a long time. Yeah, they were all, you know what? They're what all happened? gone, Brett. All the fucking haters that we dealt with, they're all fucking gone. Coughlin. That fucking loser's fucking died of probably heroin in a fucking English town somewhere, fucking loser that he is. Napalm, he's not nowhere to be seen, terrorizing that other piece of fat fucking glob of shit. They're fucking nowhere to be seen, Brett. You, you survived. I mean, when you call yourself the god killer, like I take that to mean like many different things. But one of the things I take it as is you survived, man. You destroyed them all, and you ended up being on top, and then there's, there's no one left. Yeah, there is nobody of uh, any kind of significance that can take us out there, Don. We have survived them all. I have... I I guarantee anybody out there, man, you put your faith in God and you will live to see your fucking enemies fall before you. It is what it is. All of those chumps thought they could take a piece of you, Brett, and they thought, okay, you know, I think about that guy, Raven guy. Remember that guy, Raven, with the fucking whacked out here? Oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to gonna walk up, like he's like the new guy in prison and he's going to punch the biggest, baddest guy in the prison block. You know, the old tough guy routine. 
well, I'm just going to punch the biggest guy in prison and make sure no one messes with me. Well, these cocksuckers on YouTube, they did that with you, man. They thought they can punch you, the biggest guy on YouTube. And they thought, oh, look how big badass that I am. It turned out they messed with the wrong guy, man. They tur it tur You turned around and you just pop tombstone pile drive them right into the concrete. And then you gave them the people's elbow. And that was it. They were done for and they never recovered. It's been a long time since I even thought of that Raven guy, that skinny fucking shriveled up peacock looking motherfucker. I remember him now. You remember that guy, right? But he's nowhere to be seen. He don't. Yeah, do couldn't no get more. his webcam working. Yeah, I'm sitting off in a dark corner, fucking yapping his shit, not even bothering to brush his fucking hair. Yeah, I remember that dude. Yeah, he didn't last long, did he? He decided to mild off. He lasted about as long as Coughlin's shit stained face. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just pathetic the people that they. Uh, the, now, the only person that kind of weather did weather the storm and 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 things didn't really really hurt him as bad as it could have is was I guess I guess Dickless over there, doorbell Dick, whatever you want to call him, the Dick the size of a fucking doorbell. Oh, there's a lot of things that have damaged him. There's a lot of things that have damaged him and shit. I mean, one, you got to look at it optimistically. This is a guy who's never going to fucking breed. He's not bringing any genetic mutants into the world. Once he eats, he's going to have that final Big Mac, and it's going to fucking make his heart explode out of his chest. And that's going to be that. Nothing more. Yeah. And then what's what? I wonder what his tombstone is going to read. Fattest fucking useless piece of shit that ever worked the earth dead or or they can just put one simple label on it and it'll fit perfectly not productive <laughs> oh but poetic justice huh oh man it's the that way it fun. works man it's the way it works it's See, sad that he you know Go what ahead. his worst fear is you know what his worst fear is right Never being relevant, I think, right? Something like that? Yeah, his worst fear was becoming irrelevant. Whether he's getting negative or positive attention, that was something that for him to feed on. The guy can't break 20,000 fucking views, even if he leaves a video up for a month before making another one. People don't give a fuck anymore. They don't give a shit. He's a 30-year-old motherfucker trying to pretend he's a golf. It doesn't work anymore. And I'm Ugh. watching it slowly just be taken away from him. Watching his worst fear fucking come true. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that. Like you said, that, that Big Mac to finally clog the, the rest of his artery up where he just, that's it, he's done for and we never hear him again. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I can't wait for that day, Brad. You're, oh, man. Should we take bets on when that's going to happen, is or is that too hateful? Nah, he's not going to last too long. I guarantee right. you there's going to be a fucking day where Scotty gets up there stuttering. Do, 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 do. He's gone, you know, and that's going to be that. Uh, people are saying that he's more like forty years old, not thirty. He's getting up there. He's getting. Yeah, up he's there. getting up there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought he had a, I thought he had over a million subscribers. He's not, he doesn't even have, he, you're right. He doesn't even break 20. So he has almost a million subscribers and he doesn't even get 13,000 views. Holy shit. Well, I, think holy crap. 50, I think he lost like almost 50,000 people. Let me uh, oh, take he? a look. It's been a long while since I looked over there. Yeah, because... You got to understand, I don't know if you realize this, but people can, there are websites out there where people can buy. Yeah. He went from a million something. He's down to 957K subscribers. So he lost, he's not even in a million range anymore. And shit, that's, o that's over fucking 50,000 subscribers gone, man. And you know he why, don't video, you? He has a video called Donald Trump Looks Ugly. And he and he looks the way he does, looking like he he looks like a rat's asshole, and he's gonna have the audacity to call Trump ugly when he looks like this. Come on, what's going on here? 
Biden, Joseph Biden is a comp. Well, look, okay, bro. He's latest videos. Look at the fam. Now, the guy's got 950,000 uh, subscribers, according to his subscriptions. Two days ago, he put up a video. He hasn't broken 10,000. Three days ago, he got in 13K, and that is it. And that's where he's pretty much been sticking around, if you look at that shit. It's only the stuff that's been around for seven months or more where he breaks maybe 30,000 views. That's pretty fucking bad. And you know why that is, don't you? It's because the bitch paid for fake subscribers. He went to one of these Asian websites, paid a bunch of money, so it would make him look popular and important in the search engines. And YouTube has this algorithm that if those subscribers don't have content or they don't make comments consistently or don't say something for three months, it's removed as a subscriber. I guarantee you wait a few more months, you're going to see a whole bunch of shit going. Yeah, just go over to Google and type in buy subscribers for YouTube and you'll see that shit. People have the ability to throw down 20 bucks, 50 bucks, and they could get it looking like they got 10,000 fucking subs in a matter of days. The problem is, is that they will only go in long enough to subscribe to the channel to make these people look important. But three months goes by, they don't leave a comment, they don't say nothing, the algorithm removes them as a subscriber and removes the fucking channel. Do you understand? That makes sense. It makes sense. Like, because that person's not really a subscriber if they're not participating in the channel. Right. You're going to see a lot of these atheists lose massive amount of fucking subscriptions. And that's it. That's the end of the road for them. Yeah. It just, that's the way, only way they could become relevant. Is I think, I think someone was telling me Dusty, uh, Cult of Dusty does that too. He, he buys people and, sells porn to to get his subscriber base up and stuff and pays people to leave comments yeah there's another one i think jacqueline glenn is another one that does that too another whore um loser um yeah. now think about the analytics on this i know this might be difficult for people to understand john but you know i just returned to youtube so I'm not even breaking 200 subs myself because I just returned to YouTube and making a slew of videos and shit. But look at the fucking view count on the videos when I first got in there. I got more views than I have subs. That means that more people are actually watching me and shit as where he's got what appears to be a shitload of subs but getting no fucking views whatsoever. And it's even worse for DP. Yeah. DP is pathetic. They're a fucking useless joke. Yeah, DP. Well, there you go. Yeah, what what happened with Ben? Is Ben still relevant? I mean, what, what I thought he was a I thought he turned out to be a pedophile, but wasn't didn't he turn out to be raping kids? Yeah, he was talking with underage girls and he also his girlfriend. You remember that what I did to him that one day? <clears throat> he was showing <clears throat> my channel on the screen and I showed the pictures of him fucking around with underage girls. Well, when he did that, he didn't, he didn't watch the video first before playing it. And his wife ended up seeing it and she left him over it. Oh, that's awesome, Brett. You're fucking the boss, man. That's why he fucking hates me because he got caught doing that shit. Had he watched my video before he decided to run me over and try to use it as content for his own channel, had he watched it first, that probably wouldn't have happened. He could have went more months without getting caught, but he fucking did it. So he had a, that fucking Ben guy had a fucking wife? How the, who the hell would spread her legs over for that guy? It's not just that. It's the reason why TJ ended up leaving the show. See, what happened was, is after Ben recorded me live on the screen showing that shit, or an accident on his part, he freaked out. He didn't want that to be on the show. He didn't want it. He thought that if he got rid of it quick enough, his wife wouldn't see it. So what he did was, they were already two hours and a half into their show. It's when TJ was still with them. He deleted the whole fucking show. Instead of putting it on private and just editing out that part, he got rid of the whole thing, and that pissed TJ off. 
it pissed him off because TJ feels like if he spends an hour or two doing a show, that that's something that needs to be kept. He doesn't like getting rid of his own material or content. And Ben got rid of it just to cover his own ass. That's why he's gone. That's why. Is there a way to get a hold of Ben's wife, ex-wife, and have her on the show and talk, do an interview with her? Uh, John, I know that other people would do that kind of shit to me if I were in that position or yourself. But, dude, I'm not going to put somebody's shit up there. I felt fucking horrible about Kent and his wives and shit. I did not want it to go down like that. I actually ben thought relentlessly I was tried to destroy your life, Brett. He was he was a fucking piece of garbage. Uh-huh. That Ben guy relentlessly. Yeah, you, that- I, I couldn't do I couldn't do that to somebody. Even if I was disgusted with somebody, I wouldn't I wouldn't use like their siblings or their All loved right. ones or their former uh, people for that. Man, I I can. If I'm pissed off at somebody, then I'll go after them. I'm not going after their loved ones and their family members. That's that's fucking wrong. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I didn't like. That's the reason. One of the reasons I didn't like Will. He didn't have no boundaries. He went after people's kids and shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right, Brad. I can't turn to the dark side like they are. Yeah, you're right. I actually had that moment. I actually had that epiphany once because. I, to finish the story with Will, I actually was going through backing up a couple of my old hard drives. And I found a hard drive that I wanted to re- erase and back up and put on another hard drive before I got rid of it. And I found old pictures that I took of when I used to live with Will. And holy shit, you should see the pictures that I took. And I forgot all about them. I mean, it was it was pretty bad. It was pre- they're pretty bad pictures. And Will's the type of guy who belittles Vaughn. You know, people make fun of Vaughn because he's, you know, dog's messy and the dog makes a mess and the house is a mess. And the way, oh, the, the way Will's dog used to treat the house and the way the wife used to be and the way the wife used to act. And I, oh, man. It, and I I was going to say, I want to make a video and put this up in the internet. And I, and I stopped myself, Brett. I said, I can't be like that. I can't be vindictive. I can't be a vindictive person and be like that. You know, I can't become like what they would do, the trolls. You know what I'm saying? I it's it's the yeah. best thing. You just you just don't don't let the darkness take you over. Don't let the nastiness take you over. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if you realize this, but I actually I had a got asked if I could have a discussion with someone at uh, one time. I didn't know who the fuck it was. I didn't even know that this was the case, but I had this female who said, can I talk to you, Brett? They tweeted me out on Twitter. And I said, I don't know who you are, but I, I suppose, what do you want to talk about? Got the person into a stream yards, didn't go live, just talked to the person. It turned out to be TJ's latest girlfriend. And she wanted to talk to me and everything like that. And she said, is there any way anything can get resolved and shit? And I said, well, that would be on TJ, uh, young lady. That would be him. He's the one that's uh, shoveling the shit here. Me, I'm just fucking responding and defending myself and giving him a little bit of his own fucking medicine. But she was nice to me. I treated her nice and didn't go any further. I could have recorded her ass. And put her up there and shit, and it been totally embarrassing. But I said, "Nah, I ain't doing shit like that." That was good for you, Brett. Good for you for doing that, and and it's good for you that you're able to be a moral person after everything that's been done to you. And oh, it gives me hope, you know. Um, there are well, the, there's like be some I, people out there. Not just, uh, you got to think about it like this too, John. We both believe that there's a God who is watching us. We need to be good in our hearts. We need not to go towards the dark side. And if we are tempted and we do something fucked up like that, God's going to make sure shit comes back on us. It's going to come back. And you don't want something like that to happen to you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I believe in that. I believe that, um, yes, Brett is somewhat of a gentleman. He is, yeah, he's a good guy. Brett's a good man. I believe that. I believe that things come back at you. You know, things, you know, 
karma, whatever you want to call it, you know, it, it will it will um, come back on you and it will hurt you. You know, you just put out good vibes, put out positive energy and just, you know, hope for the best. You know, and that's why you got what you got, John. You've stayed loyal and faithful to God. You stayed loyal to your friends and shit. And you've stayed, you know, that's the reason why you have all the good that you have in your life. But if we start doing, you know, doing like these fucking animals do, then we're going to be living like animals. I don't yeah. want that in my life. Yeah. Brett, you want to plug your channel real quick or plug anything, a shout out to anything? Because I'm the wife is coming home soon. It's Christmas Eve. We're going to go do stuff. And uh, I need a rest and wash up before that. And so I'm going to call. I'm going to see. I'm going to call. We're at one hour and a half mark. So it's it's this is all you. This is the floor is all yours. Um, that final message, final statements. Well, uh, this is Brett Keen from God TV radio. And I guess my last piece of advice to people out there, if you feel like you're being bullied or someone's abusing you or treating you disrespectful and you feel like they should be treating you better, you need to remember that those who truly love you, they're never going to try to hurt you. They'll never try to offend you. They'll never try to break your spirit. And if you stay strong with God, life isn't always going to be fair, but God will make sure that good opportunities and things happen in your life. And also, one other thing, just because you believe in God, it doesn't mean it's wrong for you to be angry or feel like there's injustice in the world, because the world is unfair. It's the reason why God tells us not to hold on to it and look towards the future. That's pretty much all I got to say. Thank you, Brett. Have a God. Have a great day, and and have a great Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas. Take it easy.